Sutra. The offense of different views also causes living beings to fall into the three evil paths. If they are born among people, they have two kinds of retribution. One, they will be born in a family holding different views. Two, their minds will be flattering and crooked. Commentary. Before it talked about stealing and sexual misconduct and loose speech, lying, harsh speech, double-tongued speech, and so forth. The offense of deviant views. What are deviant views? It means always having incorrect knowledge and views which are not in accord with Dharma. There is proper knowledge and proper views, and there is improper knowledge and improper views. If you don't have proper knowledge and proper views, you will believe in improper knowledge and improper views, and in that case, you will commit a great many offenses. The offense from that also causes living beings to fall into the three evil paths, the hells, the hungry ghosts, and the animals. When we people commit the offense of greed, hatred, and stupidity, we can fall into the three evil destinies. We may be in those evil paths for a short time, or the time may be long, it's not fixed. When we have paid off our offense karma in the hells and are born again among people, if they are born among people, they have two kinds of retribution. One, they will be born in a family holding different views. The family they are born into will be totally one of Devin knowledge and Devin views. And so, what they see and what they hear and what they are around will be all be will be Devin view knowledge and Devin views. Two, their minds will be flattering and cooked. The second retribution that one has to undergo for Devin views is that one's mind will enjoy will enjoy flattering people. If you put this uh, in inelegantly, it's called lying up to people and it's called being a sycophant. That means when you see people who have money, you smile and are extremely pleasant. But when you see poor people, you are haughty and won't have anything to do with them. You won't even speak to them, but when you meet people who have money, you have all kinds of things to say. That's flattery. When you see people who have money, you flatter them, and when you meet poor people, you despise them. This is the fault that most people have. To be cooked, to be cooked means to be devious. One's mind is not straight, and so everything one does is very devious and crooked. That's the retribution that people with deviant views have to undergo. It is from holding deviant views that people kill and steal and commit sexual misconduct and that they're greedy, hateful and stupid, that they tell lies, is double-tongued speech, harsh speech and loose speech. If you don't have Devon views, then you won't be able to commit those faults. Devon views lead once a kill, and once one kills, one falls into the three evil paths. Sutra, Disciples of the Buddha, the ten unwholesome karmic paths can bring forth the multitude of great masses of suffering as limitless and boundless as this. Therefore, the Bodhisattva makes the following reflection. I should leave the ten unwholesome karmic paths far behind. I should consider the ten, un the ten wholesome paths as a garden of karma, as the garden of dharma and delight in dwelling within them. I myself should dwell within them and I should encourage other people to dwell within them too. Commentary After Vada Treasury Bodhisattva had described the ten unwholesome paths of karma, he again called out, Disciples of the Buddha, you should realize that the ten unwholesome karmic paths can bring forth the multitude of great masses of suffering as limitless and boundless as these. You all know 
that through the ten unwholesome karmic paths you commit offenses, and that when you commit offenses, you fall into the three evil destinies of hell beings, animals, and hungry ghosts. Afterwards, when you have undergone your your punishment for your offenses, and come back to be a person, lots and lots of limitless and roundless sufferings will arise that group together. Therefore, the Bodhisattva makes the following reflection: I should leave the ten unwholesome karmic paths far behind. He says, "I am cultivating the Bodhisattva way, and I shouldn't keep on violating by committing those offenses. I should not longer go along the ten unwholesome karmic paths. I should consider the ten unwholesome paths as a garden of drama. I should take." The ten wholesome karmic paths, that is, not killing, not stealing, not committing sexual misconduct, not being greedy, not being hateful, not being stupid, not lying, not engaging in double-tongued speech, not uttering harsh speech, and not indulging in loose talk. Those ten wholesome paths, as my moral, there should be a guideline for me, and I should delight in dwelling within them. For me, the ten wholesome karmic paths should be like a pleasure grove that I enjoy very much, and I should dwell in them in comfort and ease. I myself should dwell within them, and I should encourage other people to dwell within them too. At that time, he he encourages other people, his friends and relatives. All to dwell within those ten wholesome paths and not commit the ten unwholesome kinds of karma, but instead always practice the ten wholesome karmic acts. Sutra, disciples of the Buddha, this Bodhisattva Mahasattva, further towards all living beings, brings forth the thought to benefit them, the thought of making them happy, the thought of kindness, the thought of compassion, the thought of sympathy. The thought of gathering them in, the thought of protecting them, the thought of them being oneself, the thought of being their teacher, the thought of being their great teacher. He makes the following reflection, saying, "Living beings are pitiful. They fall into different views, all evil wisdom, evil designs, and the thick forest of their evil destinies. I should cause them to dwell in proper views." And cultivate the true and actual way. Commentary: Varachajari Bodhisattva was afraid that people were not paying attention, and so he called out again, "All of you disciples of the Buddha, this Bodhisattva Mahasattva, the Bodhisattva who has certified to the ground of living filth, cultivates the Bodhisattva way and amasses all kinds of good fruits, does no evil, and offers up all good conduct." That is why he is called the Great Bodhisattva among Bodhisattvas. He further towards all living beings brings forth the thought to benefit them. He decides he wants to benefit all living beings. He has the thought of making them happy and how to help living beings attain happiness. The thought of the thought of kindness and how of how you can help living being attain eternal bliss. The thought of compassion, of how he can cause his own living beings to escape from suffering and difficulties, the thought of sympathy for all living beings, the thought of gathering them in, gathering, accepting and receiving all living beings, the thought of protecting them, protecting all living beings, the thought of them being oneself, he sees all living beings as being the same as himself. He has the thought of being their teacher in order to teach and transform all living beings, and the thought of being their great teacher. No matter what kind of living being it is, he teaches and transforms that being. He makes the following reflection, saying to himself, "Living beings are pitiful, very deserving of pity. They fall into devil views, devil knowledge, and devil views, and evil wisdom." They have an evil kind of wisdom, evil desires, and evil thoughts of desire, and so they fall into the thick forest 
of the evil destinies. The three evil paths are like a dense forest from which it is difficult to escape. I should cause them to dwell in proper views, the dramas of proper knowledge and proper views, and cultivate the true and natural way. True and natural drama doors which have no falseness to them. There are two kinds of people in the world. One kind is the person who wants to trick himself, and the other is the person who does not want to trick himself. They are the opposite of each other. What kind of person likes to trick himself is the person who mistakes suffering for bliss and who willingly does so. What kind of person does not want to trick himself is a person who wants to separate from suffering and attain bliss and is unwilling to deceive himself. You say, oh, I understand. The people who don't want to trick themselves are people who have left home. Not bad, but can you leave home or not? Those who do not want to trick themselves don't even have to be talked about. There is someone who is saying, Dharma Master, the way you are speaking Dharma is completely illogical. I haven't finished what I was saying. When I'm finished, you'll see the logic in it. Left home people do not want to trick themselves, but in fact, they do trick themselves. And they are saying that at home people do want to trick themselves, but actually they don't feel they are tricking themselves. How do left home people trick themselves? They say to themselves, just cultivate well and pretty soon you become a Buddha. Don't be nervous. All you have to do is perceive, perceive. At first, it's like tricking yourself. It's kind of like babysitting a child. You say, oh, don't cry and I give you a piece of candy. I don't have any candy right now, but in a little while, I'll get you some. To become a Buddha works that way too. You trick yourself. But in the future, you will become a Buddha or not. You'll find out when you become a Buddha. But for the time being, it's just the same as tricking yourself. The difference is in the methods employed because it is tricking yourself into doing good things. What do we mean by people at home not tricking themselves? Basically, they do trick themselves. They say, oh, worldly blessings, honor and glory are also fine. Gold, silver and precious gems are really wonderful. Getting fame and profit, that's all good stuff. And they trick themselves. Because those things are really not bad. You leave it up eating steak, drinking wine, going to the cocktail bar and when you drink yourself into a stupor then you soar up to the heavens sutra he further makes the following reflection all living beings make distinctions between self and others and mutually destroy each other they're fighting and and meet rage without cease i should cause them to dwell in unsurpassed great kindness he further makes the following reflection all living beings greedily grasp without satiation. They only seek wealth and profit. They sustain themselves through death and livelihoods. I should cause them to dwell in the dramas of proper livelihood, impurity of the commas of body, speech, and mind. He further makes the following reflections. All living beings constantly pursue the three poisons and the various afflictions accordingly reach. They do not understand how to seek with determination the expedients essential for escape. I should cause them to extinguish the great blaze of afflictions and settle in the place of pure coolness of Nirvana. He further makes the following reflection. All living beings are covered with the heavy darkness of stupidity and the thick membrane of false views and so they enter the dense shade of the thick forest and lose the light of wisdom. They travel on dangerous roads in the wilderness and give rise to evil views. I should cause them to obtain the unobstructed pure wisdom eye so they know the real mark of all dramas 
and do not follow others' teachings. Commentary. He further makes the following reflection: the Bodhisattva who is on the second ground, the ground of living filth, accumulates. All gurus and makes transference of them to all living beings to benefit them all, and so he makes the following contemplation. He says, "All living beings, without exception, have a view of self and a mark of self. They make distinctions between self and others and mutually destroy each other, because they have a view of self and a mark of self and make distinctions between themselves and others. They destroy each other." They fight over profit. They are fighting and enmity. Their battles with each other rage without cease. When the Buddha appeared in the world, it is known as a time when the proper drama was solid. After the Buddha entered Nirvana, it was known as the drama image or the drama semblance age. When the Emphasis was on building temples and making Buddha images. Now we have been born in the Dharma and the age when the emphasis is on fighting. Take a look at the world: countries fight with countries, families fight with families, people fight with people. They fight over power and profit and give rise to enmity, anger and hatred, which rages without cease. Their anger and their hatred is like the fire. The more it blazes, the more widely it rages, and the bigger it gets, the less it can be stopped. The blaze is so huge that it would not be easy to put it out, even with a fire struck. I should cause them to dwell in unsurpassed great kindness. I should teach these living beings who are fighting with each other. How to practice the conduct of great kindness and compassion? How not to fight with living beings and not to hate them? He further makes the following reflection: All living beings greedily grasp without satiation. All living beings greedily seek and are insatiable. There, they, there is never a time when they are content. For example, take someone who is in business. In the beginning, he says, "Wait till I've made a hundred thousand dollars, then I'll be satisfied and retire." But when he's earned that much, he has to wait. Oh, wait till I've made a million dollars, then I won't seek anything more. But when he has made that million dollars, he thinks he would like to have ten million. And when he has made ten million, he wants to have one hundred million. So that's what's known as greedily grasping without satiation. There's never any time when he feels content, when he says he has enough. They only seek wealth and profit. It's just because they are seeking wealth and seeking benefit, they sustain themselves through definite livelihoods. They don't pay any attention to whether it's proper or not. They may make their living. By gazing upward or by gazing downward, making a living by gazing upward is looking up and contemplating the way of heaven. For example, one gazes up at the stars and makes predictions on that basis, saying such and such a star is going to appear, and the world is going to have this and that happen. Do you do this to make people believe in you, and that's what's known as getting your livelihood by gazing up. Making a living, gazing downwards, is doing divination, casting fortunes. So, a bodhisattva who is cultivating the bodhisattva way doesn't ask about good luck or bad luck. Doesn't do divination. To do divination is to make a living by gazing down. Both of those are standing oneself through divine livelihoods. I should cast them. To dwell in the dharmas of proper livelihood, impurity of the karmas of body, speech, and mind.